Okay, so I ordered uh, a, a new digital torque wrench uh, from Amazon. I think it's something that's uh, far superior to what I had already. It's just, it, it's one wrench with the built-in uh, LCD screen, which is pretty cool. So it's less bits and pieces. It's just an all-in-one unit. And the interesting thing is it looks like most of it is actually shielded. So it's not bare metal. Only the end bit is bare metal, which I'm sure I can put some tape around and so forth. So. Uh, if I dropped it on uh, the battery terminals, it's not going to short everything out, uh, which is really important um, when dealing with uh, batteries like this. You've got to be really careful, which is why I don't wear a watch um, or anything like that. You've got to be, or, or any jewellery. Um, well, I have one ring, but, you know, I, I, I try not to wear any jewellery or anything dangly, earrings or anything like that that might fall off. Um, you've got to be really careful uh, when, when building batteries. Um, so anyway, I've ordered this new torque wrench. Um, I ordered it on Sunday. It's now Monday. Um, it's not going to arrive till Thursday, which is super annoying. I did go into town. Um, however, the um, uh, auto shop is closed in August. <laughs> so um, I thought whilst I wait, uh, let's get the front panel um, uh, uh, created. So let's get the front panel um, put together. Um, so, here's the front panel. Uh, it comes just bare like this with all the holes already cut. One of the things I like about uh, this kit is the front panel. It has uh, built-in threads on the back, so you don't have to deal with tiny little um, bolts which you've got to hold on to the back where you put, you know, a nut which you have to hold on to the back whilst you tighten the bolt up. Um, so that's, that's, that's really nice. Um, so I'm just following their instructions here and I'm just trying to, it's, sometimes it's quite hard to see. Okay, so these are the terminals which are going to go on the front and they've actually got a thread in there. So when the battery is finished, you can just bolt on uh, your um, connectors directly to the front, which is really nice. On the back is this flat piece, so it's a question of which way round does it need to be. And looking at the picture in the instructions, it needs to be like that. <laughs> so I'm going to put that through and uh, let's get this first one installed. Been looking forward to uh, getting this bit done. Okay. We were just looking into getting um, our planning permission to put the solar panels um, on the barn roof above me and the good news is it's uh, not that involved it's it's, it's a quite a simple process here in France um, to have solar panels put in I think the EEC is trying to encourage people to put solar in so they've kind of removed a lot of the red tape which is really great so we don't need to go through one of these massive kind of planning applications so it's not even formal planning permission but what you do need to do is you need to make a, um, put a, a it's kind of like a planning consent, but it's, it's not, I don't actually know what it's called. It's got some French name, but anyway, you have to just apply to the local town hall. Uh, they put a notice up and you can get this whole thing done within a month. So uh, Dave and I went down to um, our local um, office today, which is literally, um, I don't know, about <laughs> half a mile down the road from here and uh, to the sort of town or village hall. Uh, it's where the mayor, it's the mayor's office basically. And uh, they're closed in July and August, so there's nothing we can do. Um, so luckily it's not that long till September now. So, um, and we were kind of kicking ourselves thinking, oh, I wish we, we should have got the planning application in a month ago or three weeks ago or, um, but actually it would have, wouldn't have made any difference. Uh, so we've got a little bit of time now, um, and then as soon as September comes around, which is uh, not far from now, um, maybe you're watching this in the future, so in about two weeks, I think we've got about two or three weeks left until September, something like that, a um, couple, couple of weeks till September, um, and then uh, we can then go to the town hall, have a word with the mayor, and get this application in, and then hopefully by October, uh, in October, then we should have full uh, permission to... Um, install these solar panels on the roof. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a process, but not as bad as like official planning permission. One other thing which we are going to do at the same time 
is the barn roof as it stands uh, right now is made of kind of horrible, <laughs> basically yeah, it's, it's, it looks like it's rusty, it's rusty corrugated iron, but the actual sheets themselves are fine. Um, they've been there for over 20 years. And uh, we, we've had a look at both sides. The other side of the, the outer side has a kind of very thin layer of rust, but the inner side is very strong. Um, but we really don't like the look of those corrugated iron sheets. They look horrible. Um, plus these solar panels are actually quite heavy. It's surprising how heavy solar panels are. Um, and it would be really expensive to massively um, <laughs> reinforce the roof. It would cost a lot of money to put a lot of new timber in. Timber is very expensive now in France. And something we've been wanting to do for a long time is change the, change the roofing material. So they, they've got this new material here in France. It's this steel uh, roofing system, which all the barns now seem to have. It's instead of corrugated iron, you can get it in pretty much any color. So we'll just get like a black color or very, very dark gray. So it looks like slate. Uh, so it looks really nice. And it's much, much, much lighter than corrugated iron. So a sheet of that corrugated iron is way heavier than a solar panel. It's very, very heavy. Um, but this new roofing you can get, which is like, you know, get quite like a 10 year guarantee and everything is incredibly light. So I think what we're going to, and it's not, not that expensive. So what we're actually going to, what we're thinking about doing is incorporating, changing the entire roof um, for this new material. Now, th this new roofing material is going to cost us sort of three or four thousand euros, um, which is a lot of money, yes, but when you consider how large uh, the roof is, um, it's a vast roof. Um, so I think this would be really good. So we wouldn't be putting any extra weight um, on the roofing structure as it is. In fact, it might be slightly lighter with the new roofing material and the panels. Um, so uh, we've got easily enough room for 30 panels in a south facing um, position, which is the kind of ideal um, uh, orientation here in France, where we are, northern France, where you want to be facing uh, kind of due south for solar panels. So, um, yeah. Uh, so where's the other terminal gone? Oh, here we go. Just making sure that's correct. Yes. I want to be that way round. So yeah, so that's where we're up to with the solar. Um, I think what we'll do just until we get, you know, obviously this is all going to take a while. We've got to get the plan permission. We've got to get the old roof off. We've got to order the new material, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've got um, a, a local guy down the road. Um, he's a, an English builder. Um, you may have seen him in the workshop build video one. He was the guy that helped me put the um, original floor joists in for this particular room. Um, so yeah, he's an excellent builder, uh, English builder, and um, he's currently in England actually, but he should be coming back um, sometime today. So hopefully he'll be back, uh, not today, sometime this week rather. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's a roofer by trade and he said he can, he can do the roofs, which is fantastic. So yeah, looking, so looking forward to getting that done. So we can just hire him for you know two or three weeks and he can get that done. If he needs some help, I can help him do that. Okay, we need one more screw and I'm missing a screw. I'm worried that I've used... So here's the thing, I was talking about this in a previous um, uh, video or earlier on. I think I might have used one of these screws in the build somewhere, um, screwing something else in. So I need to go and have a look now and start taking this battery apart. Uh, or the case apart, I think I might have used one of the screws which is meant for these connectors uh, somewhere else in the case. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, if they were going to improve this uh, kit, what they should do, I mean, this is amazing that they, they, you know, the kit comes with this little box with all the different screws. In the instructions it says, you know, use an M8 bolt or a, you know, a number five screw. Well, I, I, how do I know what's number five, what's number four, how do I know what's M8? All they would need to do is put a sticker over each one of these compartments saying number one, number two, number three, number four, number five screw. Uh, maybe like, you know, experts, people who do this all the time would know what a number five screw is. And I'm sure everybody's watching this video saying, don't you know what a number five screw is? I have no clue. I've never done this before. So that would be more, that would be really helpful. Um, and you know, if, you know, if EEL um, or EEZ or whatever they're called, no, EEL, um, they're, they're, 
logo is confusing. Yeah, the EEL are watching this. That's how you can improve things with the kit. Just put some sticky labels on there with uh, the numbers of the screws. So I need to go and find that screw. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next thing. So we've got the on off switch here. So I, that goes um, here. So I was going to. Let's get them there. Um, okay, so I assume that just goes through it. And there we go. Excellent. Okay, so we need some pliers. Uh, let's try these ones. Okay. Oh, that's looking very professional. <laughs> very good. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the thing, you know, you don't actually need a kit like this. You can actually just order the components. Uh, a lot of, what a lot of people do is they uh, build their own um, battery boxes out of wood or timber, or they just use like a shelving system, like an office shelving system, and put everything on shelves. I didn't want this thing to look homemade. Um, I don't want it to look janky and kind of wires coming out everywhere and to look kind of like borderline dangerous as some of these systems do to the lay person. Um, so I wanted this to look professional um, and which is why uh, I, I, I opted to go for, you know, a proper box like this. And if you buy um, all the timber to make the boxes and everything, you know, it, it, it's not going to cost, it's not going to be that much cheaper by the time you factor in all the stuff you're going to need to buy. And then if you factor in your time, it's probably going to be more expensive. Um, right. Um, I've got less than one minute left on this memory card, so I need to go and do a memory card swap. Back in a second. Okay, so the next job is to put in the LCD screen, which also has the uh, buttons. Um, so that's uh, going to go something like that. Here we go. So that's kind of how it's going to look. Um, and see what screws I've got left over. Okay, I've got again. I don't really know which screws to use, but I'm going to use these ones because they seem to fit. So using this screwdriver because it's magnetic, and these are very small screws. A bit too small for the electric screwdriver there. So. There we go. So when I put the battery together, I was missing a bus bar. Um, and it wasn't the company uh, had forgotten to send me one. Um, it was me. I had misplaced it. So I found it. <laughs> so it was just my um, disorganization. So yes, I found that missing bus bar. It was in um, on the counter, covered with loads of stuff. Um, so yeah. Anyway, found the missing bus bar. So there we go. Anyway, that's the LCD screen in. I think that's tight enough. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, it all seems to work. Pretty good. Okay. So, what's going to be the next job? So I guess the next job is going to actually be putting the BMS in. So, drum roll, drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. So here is the, I believe this is a surplus BMS. I'm not quite sure, uh, but it, it's probably just rebranded. Um, but I, I think it's pretty much a surplus BMS. Uh, so that's the BMS. Uh, these sockets here are going to line up with let me just bring this around, uh, line up with this, I believe. Um, so I think it's going to have to go in something, something like that. There we go. I think that's going to be, I can't really show you because if I, it's kind of hard to, move everything around so you can see it, but uh, 
yeah, I think that's gonna that's gonna work. Right. So again, I need to make sure I'm using the correct screws. Um, I'm gonna go with these ones here. So that's pretty much all I got left now. Actually, can will these fit in this? Oh, okay, these are slightly slightly bigger screws. Uh, okay. Not magnetic, but uh, there we go. Whoa, here we go. <laughs> That's starting to look very professional. You see what I mean? It, it looks like a kind of like a battery system you might buy, um, which is kind of like what I was aiming for. I didn't want it to look kind of homemade and, you know, I didn't want it to look like something that I had just like made myself or, I didn't want it to look homemade and dangerous. Um, I wasn't going for the, you know, back to the future time machine look, you know, the kind of homemade mad scientist who's built something in their backyard that's borderline dangerous, you know. Um, I wanted it to look professional, um, so, you know, when people come around and see it, or if we ever sell a house or whatever, it's uh, not one of these systems where, you know, only the person who built it can know knows how to use it. That's kind of like a nightmare. So one of the interesting things I found over the years, you know, I've, I worked in uh, broadcast television for a long time, ran my own production company for, you know, 15 years. Um, I've been involved in marketing, computers, all sorts of things. And even when it comes to like, you know, creating my own home cinema and things like this, sometimes the, the most technically correct way of doing things is not the right way to do it. Um, because if you create something that is so technically like perfect um, without any compromises, it can sometimes become immensely complex uh, or it can be almost impossible for anybody else to use it except you. So sometimes, you know, you have to put compromise in. Sometimes things aren't quite as good as they could be, but usability, in my view, is far more important sometimes um, than everything being 100% like technically correct and perfect. Uh, usability is far more important. Um, so, you know, th this is so true when it comes to things like home automation, home cinema, even how you have your TV set up at home. If you've got like, you know, an Xbox plugged into it and you've got like a 4K Blu-ray player plugged into it and you've got all sorts of different things. Sometimes you can have a setup like that where it all works really nicely, but there's only one person in the household who knows how to use it. And if someone else needs to use it, you've got to be there to kind of help them use it. When, you know, so sometimes it, it's better to have it more simplified um, and more uh, usable for everybody to use. So having a battery box like this, you know, this BMS isn't necessarily the best BMS on the market. There are better BMSs in the market. Um, you know, the way that the battery is laid out in the box isn't necessarily, uh, you know, according to everybody, the best way of doing things. Um, but what it means is, it looks professional. It's it it's uh, will probably pass an inspection. Uh, if somebody, you know, if I drop dead tomorrow and some an engineer had to come in to certify the solar system, they could just look at the battery box and go, oh, okay. They would just look at it and understand instantly what's going on. Um, it wouldn't be just some mass of cables and wire. Um, th these sort of things are really important, I think, when designing a system. You've got to think about it like. Um, how would someone else use the system apart from you? Um, so everything's got to be labeled, it's got to be very clear, it's got to look professional, um, and it's got to be kind of done to a kind of industry standard that someone in the industry would instantly kind of like understand. Um, and also, you know, someone like EDF rocked up, you know, at the moment you, we can install all this stuff, okay, ourselves, but maybe in two or three years time, EDF, you know, the electricity board here might change the rules, and if they come and do an inspection of the system, if I just had like cables and wires going everywhere and I had battery cells on a shelf and, you know, that, that might kind of freak them out a bit. Whereas if it's all in proper battery boxes and it's all branded and labeled properly, uh, you know, 
um, hopefully it looks a bit more professional. Anyway, I'm yabbering on enough, so let's get on to the next step. So what is the next step? Let's have a look. So we put the BMS in, uh, we put in the screen, uh, which I believe is also the Bluetooth uh, module. Um, uh, so that's done. Uh, so what we need to now do is start putting in the bus bars and we also need to put in here is a fuse holder. So we've got the fuse holder, which is here, I believe. And I do have a fuse knocking around somewhere. I need to go and find that. Um, okay, so this will go in here. There we go. That fits very nicely. I did see the fuse over here earlier. I think it's in this box here. I think it's also, okay, I've got some nuts and bolts and screws and all sorts of things in here. So. Here is our 180 amp fuse. So, there we go. Let's just get that open. There we go. So, 180 amp fuse. Uh, okay, so it will go in something like that. That's pretty good. Um, and we've got these nuts and bolts. So I'm not quite sure what bolts go with what. Why, why have I got these bolts in with this fuse holder? I have no idea what's going on here. What do the instructions read? <laughs> RTFM moment. Okay, so it is saying, put on the fuse holder and fasten with M4 star five screws. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I've no clue what they're on about now. So, okay, I have no idea what these screws are. This is like a red herring, I think. So, what screws do we have left over? We've got these silver ones. We've got, let's see what we'll see. That is quite a big hole. So that's not gonna fit in there. Um. You would need like a washer or something. Will these actually fit in here? No, those, these screws won't even fit in there. So I have no clue which screws I should be using. I've got one of those screws left. Hmm. So. Time for a commercial break. Okay, so uh, I need to screw this in, but all of these screws will just fall through this hole here. Um, so um, I do have some of these screws, but th again, they're gonna, they're slightly too small, I think. Uh, luckily, and it's useful always to have these sort of things in stock when you're doing a job like this, is to, you know, I've got this multi-pack um, of washers. It's always useful to have like a, um, you know, if you're doing something like this, get yourself, you know, some multi-packs of washers, multi-packs of nuts and bolts. Uh, you know, those kind of things you can get on Amazon, which are, you know, a you know, hundred assorted nuts, bolts and washers of different sizes and things. Um, you know, I would not be happy if I had to now go all the way into town just to buy a washer, uh, considering when it's a, um, it would take me like an hour and a half to get into town and back. Um, if I wanted to go and buy these. So it's always useful to have these sort of things in stock and they're not very expensive. So I've just put a washer in um, with one of those screws so it won't fall out. Um, and let's just, so obviously I have used one of the wrong screws along the way somewhere or they have given me the wrong thing or I don't know, something. And that's not even tight, so, ugh. Okay, let's take that one out. See, that's too... So that bolt there, that bolt is too long. So we have some shorter ones in here. Seems to be some assorted bolts here. That's a slightly shorter one. I'll put the washer back in. Let's see if that one will work. Right, that one works. So we need to use these super short bolts and one of my washers I have in stock. Here we go. 
tell you, when you, when you live out in the sticks here, um, in the middle of nowhere, you know, and it takes like an hour to drive to the shops, it's really important to keep extra things in stock like this because it can like, you know, for me, if I was going to drive into town and back and by the time I get back, then it's going to be like 5 p.m. and then it's, you know, getting time for dinner and then it's like the day's gone. Um, you can lose a day just going into town. Um, so it's so important just to really stock up on all these types of things. And also you like Amazon, you know, it's, it, it might take three or four days for something like this to arrive from Amazon here. So it's re I think it's really important to keep these sort of things in stock. So let's see. So I think we should have the washer on the bottom and then they've got this split ring, I believe. I think that's the way I'm gonna do it. Let's do it that way. Okay, there we go. I've got this uh, fuse in. So there is just cer ceramic at the bottom. Um, so what I've done is I put the washer on the bottom and then um, I've slid the fuse over the top of the washer. Then I've put the, um, I don't know what, what it's called. Actually, I should have no idea what these things are called. Um, shows how much I know. It's like these kind of, uh, I think it's called a split washer, I think. It's a thing which stops the nut coming off, yeah? It holds it down. So it's like a washer that's being cut and then it's splayed open a bit. So when you tighten it down, it keeps everything tight. Um, so yeah, so I've got the washer, I put the fuse in, then I put the split washer on top um, and then I put the bolt on top of that. Um, so I'm hoping that's the correct way of doing it. Um, so now I just need to tighten that down. Um, so uh, what I need is a socket. Uh, where are we? So, let's find a socket. Is that going to be the right size? Nope. Nope. Need a bigger one. Bigger. There we go. That fits nicely. out every time I turn it. Oh, there we go. Again, I'm not sure if this is meant to be down to a Pacific Torque. I'll have to look at that later. And then um, when I get the torque wrench, then torque everything up. So we've got the fuse in, uh, we've got the on-off switch in, we've got the BMS in, we've got the uh, connectors in for the battery, battery terminals, minus one screw. I need to find a screw for that. I don't currently have anything the right kind of size. I need to order some more assault, assorted bolts and things. Uh, um, we've got our BMS in, everything is all set now. So the next thing we need to do is install our very weird, janky arrangement of bus bars. Look at this. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I found out what these bolts are for with these square washers. This is for tightening um, these bus bars down to the BMS. So I guess it's just a case of looking at the pictures and trying to copy what they've done here. So the first one which we are going to do is we're going to connect up um, the bottom here of the BMS to the fuse. And I, I'm now thinking I shouldn't have actually tightened up the fuse. <laughs> so this is okay. So I need to need the ratchet here. I need to undo what I've just done here. Um, there we go. That was just a practice run. You understand? <laughs> because I need to connect the bus bar to the other side of the fuse. I'm sure everybody was screaming at their computer screen when I was doing this. Like, no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> So we need just this kind of straight bus bar. This one here, I guess. Okay. So this is going to let's take this off completely. Does it say whether I should put the washer first or the split ring? 
No, it doesn't. If you know in the comments, please tell me, should I be putting the, I don't know which order to put the washer and the split ring in. Um, so I'm going to take this out. Hmm. So that could go like that. Should that go like that? Should the, see, I don't know if I should go like that, that. And then maybe I should put the washer and the split ring. I think it should go like that. I'd, well, maybe. Okay, that's the different height, but it doesn't matter because this is a flexible bus bar. So thinking about it, whenever I've taken bolts off, they, it's usually been, I've taken like the bolt off and then taken the split ring off and then there's been like a washer underneath the split ring. So maybe that's what we should be doing. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Which order should you do? Should, should the washer be underneath the fuse or should the washer be on top of the fuse? Bearing in mind, underneath the fuse, it's literally just, um, you know, it's this insulated material here. It's this porcelain um, or ceramic or whatever it is. So let's use the old electric screwdriver for this one. So. Too much torque on that. I'm going to back this off a bit. There we go. Okay. Maybe I should just do the final tighten by hand rather than using the electric screwdriver, and then I can get a feel for how tight it is. It's hard to know how tight it is when you do it with the electric screwdriver. So, again, maybe these need to be done to a torque setting. Um, they probably do. I'll just do this hand tight until I get you know, the next section in. So I'm guessing the other side of this fuse needs to then be connected to the top here. And it does. So, what have we got here? So I think it's this one here. So. This is lovely, the way all these bus bars go together here. Yeah? These flexible bus bars, it's very nice. Very good, big fan of that. Okay. Oh, no, I'm gonna take that off. So I think it goes like that, like that. Yep, I think we're good. And then I'm gonna need Okay, so there's threads inside. Let's look at the picture again. Yeah, okay. So are these all the same length? So again, I don't know which bolts I should be using here. Let's just get them all out and have a look. So we've got, I've got, it's just, Move this out of the way so you can see it. I just want to see what, uh, count how many of each bolt I've got, because they're different lengths. So I've got those two long ones, four long ones, and I've got four of these short bolts. Okay, so I'm thinking, Okay, I'm not quite sure what to use the short ones for. Well, let's see if the short one will even fit. Okay, so looking at it, I think the short bolts will be fine for this. Uh, maybe the long bolts are for connecting up your cables on the front of the battery when you connect it to the inverter. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm not going to tighten everything full tightness. Um, interestingly, these bolts have come with the split ring and then the washer. So I think that is probably the order. So, yeah. So I've got the washer down first and then the split ring on top. Okay, let's try. I'll just move all these bolts out of the way. Let's just undo, back that off a little bit. Okay. 
it's really nice the way that all goes together. I'm very pleased with that. That's much better than having dangling cables, you know. Again, I don't want to put too much force on any of these until... Does that fit over that one? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. I don't know if this is meant to be done to a torque setting. If it is, then I will come back and torque these all to the exact, really correct torque setting. I'm, the problem I have is I always do things up too tightly. So I'm being careful not to do it too tight because I don't want to strip any threads or break something. Okay, fantastic. Hey, look at that. I'm very pleased with that. That's looking really good. Okay, so we now need to connect up this part of the battery. Sorry, this part of the BMS. Um, and that is going to connect to these posts. Um, and then there's going to be another bus bar coming up here, uh, which is going to go connect to the battery. And then another one here, which is going to connect to the battery as well, or the battery cells rather. So... Um, let me see. So I'm thinking this one is probably going to go like that. Um, we need, we're going to need something here. So I think that's going to be something like that. Let's have a look at the picture. Picture says, tells a thousand words, doesn't it? Um, okay, I think... Yeah, I think it's going to be something like that. Um, and then this one is going to go kind of like that. And then we've got our two terminals there, which are which will connect to the battery. So um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to connect up this one here. Yeah, and this is all flexible, so let's use a bigger screwdriver. Going to need a bigger screwdriver. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then we've got uh, these three here. So let's connect up those. This is kind of like, this reminds me of building a computer, building a PC. Um, Building a PC with instructions. So this is, I think, easier than build easier than building a PC. Um, you know, when you build a PC, you just order a bunch of bits, and it's up to you to put them together. Okay, the you know the motherboard would have a, a manual, um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty good. I I like this. That's assuming the damn thing works when I switch it on. <laughs> so and actually, when you build computers, they don't always work. Sometimes you have a bad component, or you put something together wrong, or you might have damaged something. Um, so this is a bit like building a PC. If you've ever built a PC, you can definitely build this. The only difference is, I would say, is that everything is a lot heavier, so the cells weigh an absolute ton. And obviously, it can be quite dangerous, because, you know, you've got to be really, really careful. You know, with a PC, you've got to be careful, because if you short something out, you'll just destroy your CPU or motherboard. With this, if you short something out, you can start a fire or have an explosion. So you've got to be really careful. Okay, so that there is going to need to connect to there. Excellent. So let's get that off. We're almost there on the home run. So that needs to go in there. And it doesn't sit very flat there, does it? Uh, right, and then that's going to connect around there. So let me move that around so you can see. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that's tight. Okay. And we're going to use the short screws again. Because they seem to work fine. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Ah, perfection. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> okay, so we have one more thing to put in. One final thing. This cable. Um, again, very similar to a PC, isn't it? Okay, so this is the uh, display and the buttons and also the, I think it's the Bluetooth module. I'm not sure. So, okay, that doesn't fit there. So maybe it goes in here. I should have put that in before I put the bus bar in. But actually, it's not that hard. There we go. So let's put that underneath. And so I'm thinking it probably goes in there. There we go. Done and done. So, oh, well, hang on, we've still got this cable here, which is the on off switch. Um, we've got this bit of heat shrink here floating around. So that needs to, there we go. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, and then that will go in there, the on off switch. Fantastic. And I think what I'll do is I will just put a quick cable tie there. Let me just go and grab a cable tie. Let's keep things neat. We don't want things getting hung up. Um, I don't have any short cables ties in stock, so this will have to do and I'll cut it off. Again, this will just stop things flapping around in the breeze. There we go. Uh, Snips, snips, snips. Where are my snips? Okay, I'll just use some scissors. Ta -da! Okay, so uh, one final thing which I did, I just realized I had the actual uh, buttons here for um, the LCD screen. So uh, off camera, I just fitted those. And the other thing which I realized is the protective film on the screen, I hadn't actually peeled it off. Um, so off camera, I just removed the screen again, peeled the protective screen off, because that kind of really irritates me if the, <laughs> I see the plastic uh, underneath. Because after a year or two, it will start to discolor and peel off anyway, and then bubbles will appear and it won't look very good. So anyway, yeah, so I pulled, pulled the screen off, peeled the film off and then put these buttons in. So yeah, so the next job is uh, we're gonna put this uh, directly on to the battery. So let's put this in. Can you, I just always, not sure if you can see things. So I think you can. So hopefully you can see everything. So that's gonna go down there. And I think that will go there. Let me just. I'm happy with that. Interesting that this um, this one here, this bus bar has two different holes in it. So I guess, depending on the orientation um, of your battery and everything, you could put it in any of those two positions. So I'm just gonna connect that up. I've got the balance lead underneath. I'll go with the first position there, I think. We're gonna do the second position. I think we'll go with the second position. There we go. Now, like I said, I don't have my torque wrench, so I will just go. To my best judgment until Thursday, I'm not going to be using this battery, so um, I just, I'll fire it up, but I'm not going to pull any load on it, so it's not going to be dangerous. Now I am missing one nut. I've either lost it or they didn't send me it in the post, so not quite sure. So I'm going to go with the washer first. Uh, we talked about this earlier, and then we're going to go with the this uh, oh, whatever this thing is called, split washer, I think it's called. Again, I use this is a nut and a nut and split washer and washer from my parts bin stuff I had in stock. There we go. So that is now connected. Okay, so the last job now is just going to be putting on um, all of the bolts.
we've got um, something on the front there. Fantastic. So let me just bring the camera down so you can see. Okay, so at the moment it's just saying battery management. Um, so let me just bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see that there. Okay. Ah, there we go. Let's have a look. State of charge, 49.9%, really, that's not right. Um, not quite sure what's going on there. And it seems to have turned itself off. Let's click on the uh, reset button. There we go. I'll have to read the manual. I might need to do a full discharge and recharge to calibrate the, uh, the BMS. And what I'll do next also is get my multimeter out so we can measure the voltage um, between the terminals there. And then I'll put the lid on. Uh, there we go. So we are getting absolutely nothing. Let's put it directly on the terminals here. So we're getting 56.4 volts directly on the battery. On the terminals, we are getting nothing. Okay, so not quite sure what's going on here. Interesting. I guess I might need to read the manual. Okay, what an idiot I am. I switched everything on uh, and couldn't understand why nothing was working. It kept turning off, getting weird readouts on the BMS screen. And then I realized I had forgotten to put the BMS uh, uh, battery, sorry, the, I'd forgotten to put in the balancing leads from the BMS to the battery. So I need to take the front panel off again and then connect the, um, these connections. So let's, um, remove these screws, which are really hard to put in, which is a kind of pain. It's at times like this that I'm really pleased I have an electric screwdriver. Right, let's get these balance leads connected. So we've got one white one, one black one, so I'm assuming the black one goes here. Actually, I don't even know where on the board they go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the bus bars from the battery, I think. That's going to be the sensible thing to do. <laughs> okay, so I can't even see where these go. Oh, okay. So we've got two um, here on the edge. That's where the leads go. So I'm just going to connect those up now. But these are the kind of problems you have when doing something for the first time. Oh, there we go. That's clicked into place nicely. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to be very careful not to short anything out here. There we go. Just holding those down because what I don't want to happen is for one of the cables to short out against the chassis and then potentially, you know, create a short. You know, that would not be. That would not be a good day in the office, would it? <laughs> so, um, let's just get this all connected. I think we're almost there. There we go. Uh, let's tighten this up. I need to tighten it all the way. Fantastic. So uh, everything's working. I've just turned the battery on. We're getting 56.37 volts. I've also just had the multimeter out and confirmed that on the front terminals um, of the battery and it is all working. So fantastic. I've created my first battery. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just put all the rest of the screws in, put the lid on, get all the screws on because um, it's going to be a few days before the torque wrench arrives. 
Um, so yeah, so that's the first battery uh, complete. I'm super, super excited to have that done. Uh, had a few little teething problems, forgot to hook up the BMS, um, or the rather the battery balancing cables. Um, the next job is going to be connecting everything to a computer to uh, test it out, uh, look at all the settings, see how everything's behaving. Um, and also I have an external, um, I have a, an extra balancer, which um, I might put into this pack as well, which we might do in a future video. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm super stoked and um, this has been Gridbusters. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and um, I'll see you next time.